Hi, Bread and my dear fellow cultural enthusiasts. Welcome back. Before we find out if her tail starts above the hole or below and how that affects when she number twos, <laughs> let's briefly discuss this manga's setting. There's all sorts of people in this manga's world. People with horns, people who are huge, invisible people, and of course, there's Sumiki. She's a werewolf. She and others like her are called Genjin, which means a bunch of nasty freaks in Japanese. On the other hand, Yutaka is just an ordinary human. He recently transferred over to this new high school, which has loads of freaks, I mean Genjins. And because he's the main character, he shares a locker beside Tsumiki. Unlike the normie that our boy Yutaka is, Tsumiki has all sorts of extraordinary superpowers. For instance, watch how she bends her locker door just because her massive shoes won't fit. And you know what they say about people with big feet. They have big shoes. To compensate for his lack of any useful powers, Yutaka likes to act as a hallway but crusader. So he employs his ability, Triggered, to immediately call out Tsumiki for damaging the school's property. Sensing that he's about to have an emotional breakdown, Tsumiki uses her werewolf strength to fix the door. Still, Yutaka just loves being a nosy f and suggests she put her shoes on top of the lockers. Probably because he's also a closeted, feet-loving freak who wants to steal her shoes later and get a good whiff. But Sumiki generously offers him the benefit of the doubt and pats him on his back. Yutaka's fragility is put to test once more, but this time he's kind of got a point. I mean, she could have easily isekai'd him to another realm with her super strength even by accident. She assures him not to worry though since she's able to control her strength, as if that actually needed explaining. Feeling remorseful about his rudeness, Yutaka starts impersonating Donald and says, Let me tell you something. Nobody is more inclusive than I am. This time, Sumiki smacks Yutaka a little harder to remind him that this is Mata's channel, not Netflix, so he can relax. Then she strides off like a G while Yutaka lets us know that Sumiki also has good hearing too, because she's got big fluffy ears. That also makes her super popular in school because everyone wants to grab those ears as handles while they, uh... Anyway. Everyone in Tsumiki's class loves feet, too. So imagine their excitement when Tsumiki reveals that her shoe size is 30. To put that into perspective, Shaq wears size 22 shoes, which measures 16 inches. That's gotta mean Tsumiki's feet are nearly two subway footlongs, but let me check with mine to make sure I'm right. <laughs> yep, so that means she has enough real estate on her feet for all her classmates to nibble on or do whatever it is that feet people do. How would I know? I swear I don't know. Anyway, and she's also got these nasty toenails that she doesn't bother cleaning because if anybody's got a problem with it, she can honestly just f*** them up. While the class respectfully falls silent over the state of her toes, our boy accidentally lets out a scoff. He tries to cover his mouth, but it's too late. We all just saw his arrogant little speech bubble escape his mouth. But since we're only on chapter one, Tsumiki lets him exist for now instead of sending him to another dimension. Besides, she can't get enough of herself and basks in the attention from her classmates. So she continues talking about herself, this time showing off her big and bushy tail. Just like us, it looks like everybody is curious whether her tail starts above or below the hole. But no one dares to ask, fearing that the next panel they find themselves in might be in the world of sword art online. Anyway, since Utica is the main character of this manga, Tsumiki gives him the privilege of stretching the belt thingy that keeps her tail in place. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that this is called a foreshadowing. Because he's going to be stretching something else of hers later, maybe equally as wide if he's brave enough. Those werewolves can sure take a beating. However, Yutaka is well aware that YouTube is monitoring this channel, just like these fanboys are, so he opts out of the opportunity. Anyhow, the class simply can't get enough of Tsumiki. One of them gets curious whether werewolves eat humans. With a bright smile, she reassures them that her current diet doesn't involve humans. Of course, our boy can't help himself be an avenger of virtue and remind everybody that it would be illegal. Tsumiki quietly smiles to thank Sherlock's service. She also briefly reconsiders whether she should send him to be with the Lord. But her thoughts are thankfully interrupted by a side character who shows her a picture of a full moon. Tsumiki retreats in a panic, but it's too late. 
She lets out a howl with the longest speech bubble I've ever seen. Nothing much happens afterwards until lunchtime when someone comes to visit Sumiki. It's Moritaka, a vampire from the other class. Apparently, all vampires are genetically beautiful, even vampires born with an extra chromosome like Moritaka. But his Riz game clearly needs some work, because he immediately gets rejected by Sumiki. But enough about her. Let's learn a little more about our boy. I introduced him as an ordinary human earlier, but I lied. He has the gift of being invisible to his classmates. Take a read at the group chat conversation with his classmates. Clearly disappointed, he decides to simply head home to get inappropriate with his left hand as usual. But suddenly Tsumiki appears again, looking all dirty and covered in mud. Possibly another foreshadow, but anyway, it's because she was digging a hole outside. Oh my god, maybe it really is a foreshadow. Okay, but back to the story. She says she was trying to save her lunch for later. But then her canine instincts kicked in so she couldn't stop herself from digging. So there's just a massive pit outside the school now that an innocent student might fall into. Impressed with how Tsumiki just does whatever the fuck she wants, Yutaka asks how he can be more like her. You mean how to be like a werewolf? No. He means how to be more confident in himself and self-assured. You see, he's always lacked confidence, concerned with how he'll be perceived by others. In contrast, she's such a self-confident G that Yutaka can't help but admire her. It's because she's a freak. I mean a Genjin. She thinks it's easier for Genjins to come to terms with their uniqueness since they're different by nature. On the other hand, there are social expectations imposed on humans. So she actually thinks being a human might be more difficult. But you didn't click on this video for no sociology lecture. So Tsumiki decides it's time to finally reveal where her tale starts. However, Yutaka immediately rejects her offer. As a righteous crusader, he refuses to partake in such beastly activity. As you might recall, though, Tsumiki is a werewolf, which means she's strong as fuck. That in turn means she doesn't have to take no for an answer from anybody, because she can just muscle her way through. Still, out of courtesy for his pride, she gives him the opportunity to make his own choice. This time he looks to be considering it. Wait, what is it she wants anyway? A handshake? Or a hug, maybe? Psych! As soon as his guard is down, Tsumiki goes for a takedown, right into a fireman's carry. As she dangles him over the window, our boy pleads for his life. But like I said, Tsumiki never had to ask anyone's permission to do anything in her life. So she just jumps out the window to end this manga. No, I'm obviously joking, you guys. They land safely thanks to her big-ass feet. Nothing much happens on their way to the train station. They simply bid each other farewell upon arrival. But right before, she does get real close to his cheeks, which apparently means, let's get along, in werewolf language. That makes me curious how werewolves thank each other. Maybe they sniff underneath the balls. Only minutes after saying goodbye, Yutaka receives a text message. It's from Tsumiki, letting him know that she added his number. That kicks off a blush fest on Yutaka's cheeks and also on his face. The next day, Tsumiki goes to school to find a letter underneath her size 30 shoes. It's a letter from Yutaka, which honestly doesn't say anything significant. And he also gives her a pair of socks. As a gesture of gratitude, Tsumiki invites him over to her place. Wait a second. You're telling me he's going to do it werewolf style at her place in just two chapters of this manga? All because of socks? However, Yutaka stalls for his time before giving an answer, claiming he's got to check his schedule. He's never gone over to a girl's place, let alone a freaking werewolf, so he's feeling the nerves. What's worse is that at lunchtime, Yutaka is brought into questioning by the committee members of Tsumiki's fan club. Although Yutaka solemnly swears that he and Tsumiki are just friends, the simps maintain their suspicion, given that Tsumiki has never invited anyone over to her place, ever. This gets Yutaka even more confused, so he eventually decides to turn her down. Alas, he simply can't get rid of his curiosity about whether her tail is north or south of her stink star. <laughs> so in the end, he takes back what he said, and Sumiki graciously allows him to do so. And thus, it looks like we're finally about to find out on Saturday, boys. There he is, looking more nervous than a turkey on Thanksgiving. And here she comes, looking pretty dank except her tail seems to go right through her pants. 
which means it'd have a hole in it. Convenient, wouldn't you say? Just like our boy, I'm clenching my teeth as I write this. The problem is, he has to climb a mountain to get to her place. Yutaka didn't anticipate doing a goddamn hike, but the things you gotta do just to get cultural with a werewolf girl, am I right? And on their way, Tsumiki's shirt gets stained with blotches, which just might serve as another foreshadow. She thinks they look like paw prints, but if you ask me, I'd say they look like Yutaka's egg whites. So anyway, after a long track through the mountains, here they are. Tsumiki taps the suspicious-looking rock and it magically opens. Holy shit, who's that? Are they about to fight this giant fox-looking demon? Never mind, he's just a doorman. He gets paid minimum wage. Whoa. Look, you guys. Her tail. Okay, for real. It's a big den where all the werewolves live. And this, you guys, is where Tsumiki lives. I don't spot anything out of the ordinary except for this suspiciously cute teddy bear. Tsumiki excitedly shows Yutaka the socks he gave her, which she's using as decoration, because she'd ruin them with her nasty toes if she wore them. Oh, by the way, she's got three younger siblings. As you might have guessed, they're also strong as fuck. Unfortunately, that means Yutaka is going to spend the next three hours babysitting instead of clapping some werewolf cheeks as he thought he would. When he's able to finally catch a breath, Tsumiki's sister, Itsuki, comes along to ask how her older sister is doing in human society. You see, she's worried about Tsumiki. A lot rides on her doing well, because how she does in the human world will affect the rest of the werewolf community. In fact, it hasn't been that many years since werewolves began interacting with humans, so most werewolf children still don't attend school in the outside world. Tsumiki's parents think that if she does well in the human world, it will give courage to the other werewolf children. That's the burden that Tsumiki carries, the success of her entire race. Later, when Tsumiki comes to check on him, Yutaka apologizes for underestimating her circumstance. However, she says none of that is true. No, she's not living her life to represent the werewolf community. She's attending a human school simply to be better than her sisters. This is all true, by the way, I'm not joking this time, so he doesn't have to feel insecure about bothering her. Besides, she wouldn't have invited him over in the first place if she felt uncomfortable. Finally, with the pretense of communicating through werewolf language, Yutaka leans over to get a good whiff behind her ear. That gives him a hit like nothing else. Yutaka then gets flustered, which makes Tsumiki all shy. That in turn makes Yutaka even more shook. Before this blush fest leads to hypertension, Tsumiki suggests it's time for Yutaka to leave. And as she accompanies him back to the minimum wage earning werewolf, Tsumiki's siblings realize the all too obvious fact that they are in love. We find ourselves this time in the school cafeteria. They provide all sorts of food given how many different freaks, I mean Genjins, there are at the school. They even serve insects, which is kind of offensive to this girl, no? But honestly, who cares about the side character? Evidently, Tsumiki arrives at the scene in a much bigger panel to signify her greater importance. She's excited to see Yutaka at the cafeteria since he normally eats elsewhere, alone in a hidden spot at the school, which reminds me of my high school days. Anyway, she wants to know where that is. On their way, though, she appears to change her mind, probably because her super hearing ears heard these two get cultural behind the school. But Moritaka, the vampire we met earlier, doesn't want to do it before he can have some of her red juice. The girl could have just said no, but instead... She slaps his cheeks and runs away as if she's the victim. He seems to be fine, though, seeing that he's already inviting a different girl as a replacement. Seeing his desperation, Tsumiki decides to step in and offer her red juice. Before Yutaka can protest, however, she already approaches him, and when the vampire asks, she actually lets him do it. At first, Yutaka just stands there, as if to accept his fate like a pathetic loser. But seeing her neck get nibbled on, and her f***ing blushing? That makes Yutaka lose his sanity. Holy shit, you guys. Is he about to throw down with the school's vampire? If you're curious, you can start reading from halfway past chapter 3. Because that's where I'm ending the recap. As always, thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.